First of all, thank you for calling me important. All the people here are important, and I appreciate everything uh, that you do. You're here for purposes. I'm not trying to take any of your time. But I'm ready to be fined by this township because I'm parking cars on property that I own Steve, and pay taxes on. I apologize. If you could address, uh, talk in the microphone so we can pick it up. I didn't want to be record. rude to everybody there. So, I will speak. I hope you hear me. I don't want to have my back to you. Because most of you have had your back, my back, for years, so I appreciate <laughs> it. All right, so here, here's the thing. We don't think we're special. We don't think we're entitled to any privilege. But I do believe in courtesy and respect. I'm parking cars on property that I own because of the economic conditions of automobile manufacturers. It's been happening for years. I get a letter, a certified letter, from the township that I have operated and worked in for 37 years, built my businesses, employed many of the residents, and I get a letter from, is Michael J. Tessalano here? I don't believe no, Michael's not here tonight. tonight. He's not here. And I'm here taking up people's time because he sends a letter, doesn't stop by, have the courtesy of respect and decency, and tell me what his issues are. So I get a certified letter in the mail that I will be fined if I don't do certain things. That's not how I do business. I don't want any particular help, but I do want my employees and my business respected by this town that I pay, have paid millions of dollars in taxes, have spent millions of dollars on community efforts, and I have some anonymous person, who is this guy? Did you hire Mayor? Did you hire him? We all hired him. You hired him? Yes. Did you vet him? Do you know anything about him? We do. I don't know a thing about him, but I get a letter, soon to be Administrator Hutchins. I get a letter from this man who doesn't come to my office to sit down and say, we have an issue. How can we resolve it? It's not the way I do business. If this town continues on the path that it is, I have great fear for me being able to continue to do business. I wouldn't treat any one of you coming into my dealership or anybody in this audience in that matter just because it says the township of Raritan and it says zoning and property maintenance inspector, not good, not good. I do have an ordinance that I'm going to suggest that you consider that will allow us to temporarily park on property that we own or in the business zone where no, no member of the public needs to go. A common sense solution, instead of having the bureaucracy, the people that are in charge, I don't like it. It's not right. I don't do it in my business. And I will not continue to feel the way I do about this township or feel about the way I have tried to conduct myself for 37 years here. Just because you have power and authority doesn't mean you have earned it or deserved it. Do you have any questions for me? Can I just say a few things, uh, uh, members of Mr. Califer, you I have tremendous Call me respect. Steve. Steve, I have tremendous respect. I've known you for a long time. and. The way you treated my best friend Jim, Jim Hay was just unbelievable, and I just, I, you are just- I expect person. nothing for that. I, no, I, I just wanted to say that, that, you know, I talked to your attorney. He sent over later in the afternoon to me a proposed resolution for this governing body to act on, and he cited a particular section of the ordinance 
Um, unfortunately, that section of the ordinance allows the planning board to grant those temporary <coughs> extensions, and I believe they're meeting tomorrow night. Tomorrow night. But this board, this governing body, doesn't have the right to grant that extension. The other thing that your attorney did, rightfully so, was to file an appeal of Mr. Pesolano's timely appeal of his decision. I had 30 days, Counselor. 30 days or I would be fine. I think it was even 20. Fine, yeah. 20 days yeah. or you will be fine. Where is he tonight? I don't know. Mr. Califer, let me just say that in my humble opinion, this was handled very shoddy and there was no excuse for it. It would have been very simple for the man to pick up a phone it was not done. Had I been in that position, I certainly would have picked up a phone. And I certainly would have respected one of the people who paid a, a, large, a large amount of taxes, if not the most, in the township. How about respecting the community? Forget what I pay. I respect this community. And I will tell you that I would much rather have you in those dealerships than have you sell them and get people to take them over from the Somerset County area or elsewhere. I can assure you I'm not selling the dealerships, but the way business runs today, I'm in the logistics business, I go to the next community, and these can be car storage areas under your zoning ordinance. We need to get back to the basics, and in my judgment again, we need to operate a little more as if we were back in the days of Little House in the Prairie. And I will say, it was handled shoddy, and it's indicative of the fact it's been told to me, and I agree wholeheartedly, that our township was in a lot better shape when it was ran by the farmers in the 60s, as opposed to being run by the professionals today. I, Steve, could I ask a question? I'm sorry. Yes. I, I, Steve, I was just going to say that um, I, I agree it was an error in judgment in the way it was handled. Um, and uh, it's one of those things that uh, if you could take it back, we would. Um, um, and I um, would encourage you, because it sounds like, according to our attorney, that we can't act on it tonight because it is a planning board issue, but they are meeting tomorrow night. Well, here's my concern, Mayor, and I appreciate it. My concern is I have a voice that people will listen to. I'm worried about all of the people here whose names you don't know, whether it be tonight or another night or the day after tonight, who Mr. Pasolano or people in the zoning department will ride roughshod over. People want to obey the law. They want to cooperate with everybody there. They just need to understand that there's a give and take and that there's not just the official might of your hand, but there has to be a way that people work together. I, I and we're losing it, Mayor, and I'm not blaming this council. I am not. It's what's happening in America today. It's what's happening in the state of New Jersey. I have choices. A lot of people don't have choices. They have to cower before the boards or the committees. They have to say, yes, please, and don't hurt me. There's nobody here that can hurt me but there are people that can hurt themselves and hurt this community. I appreciate everything. As far as a uh, 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 counselor, as far as the planning board, we'll accept whatever we have to do in the process. But I would like the public officials here to say yay or nay, straw vote. Is that something you're going to recommend that the planning board adhere to and go forward with? I certainly. Mr. O'Brien? I, I will say yes, but I'd like to ask you one or two questions yes. first, if I may. Um, so you got you have a letter in front of you. When did that letter come out? Finally? It came out. It's so unofficial. December fifteenth. By the way, it sat in somebody's office for five or six days. I got this well uh, right before the Christmas holiday. So so time doesn't matter to anybody. Merry, Merry Christmas. Next, yes. but but next, go ahead. When did you you were responsible? I see it on my packet here. I think it was January twenty something or other. So so you sent a letter back saying I have a problem. Can we talk? Because no one's called you. At all about this. Nobody. And I think your letter said, please, can we come in and talk? And so three weeks later, even though you sent a letter and we haven't responded? I don't know the dates, but I can assure you that we do try to adhere to responses on a timely basis. I will recommend unequivocally. But, but I 
I mean, we've had our differences. See, we've disagreed on one or two things, but you've always called me up, and sometimes you've agreed with me, sometimes you've chewed me out, and probably more right than wrong. I'm very direct. But but you've been very direct. You've always talked to me about it, and it, it bothers me greatly when communication doesn't happen. I'm bothered for the people that don't have the voice. So yes. So so let's get to it and hold us accountable. I believe me, I would. Is this something you're going to recommend? I recommend it right now, sir. Absolutely, unequivocally. Mike. Yes? I'm on the planning board as well. I've got no problem. I'll recommend your actions tonight. And by the way, there's a meeting tomorrow night. Uh, My wife had a hip operation, and I'm going home to take right. care of her tonight. You certainly have the right to make a call to the secretary tomorrow, Mr. Kessler, and ask that you be just given the opportunity to speak. And, and the, same, the same resolution that you sent me, if you could just address it and fax it over to the attorney for the board, I think it would be a, the right thing to do. Yeah, that's exactly what I don't want to take any more time from the audience. Thank you for your time today. Thank you for Thanks coming for in using your voice. Thank you, Mr. Califord. Well, I see. <laughs> <laughs>